Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Ben Worcester, and I am an advisor for PTK, the College Honor Society, and welcome. Uh, we're here tonight to honor the people in the first few rows of the auditorium. We're honoring you for your academic excellence. Um, no, and I don't know how many people know this, but uh, no one can join this organization without a 3.5 grade point average. <clears throat> and as an instructor at, at the college, just from the teacher's standpoint, I want you people to know that you're the types of students who make my job a lot easier. You, you show up every day, on time, ready to work, and you get the job done. Um, I would add, though, that PTK is more than academics. Um, it's a service organization. And I invite you inductees to consider taking part in some of our fundraisers and service projects that benefit not just the college, but the wider community. Uh, this is important work, and it's rewarding work. Uh, after graduation this spring, we're going to lose some, some key uh, people in our, in our little group, and I hope that some of you here in the audience tonight will consider stepping up. Um, now I'd like to introduce the members of the people on stage in front of us, and I'll start. With Pat over, Pat, are you, are you there still? Pat's our pianist. She comes every induction and does a wonderful job. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> uh, to the right, and I'll go in order, is uh, Megan Jones. She is our public information officer. Next to her is our chapter president, Gina Howe. And then Cheryl Hash, she's our secretary. Um, this is Anne Marie Freeman, she's a faculty advisor. And Donato Morwell, also a faculty advisor. And uh, next to Donata is Celeste Alice. She's our keynote speaker tonight, and Donata's going to introduce her in, in some detail in a moment. And finally, I'd like to introduce um, RCC's vice president for uh, student development, Dr. Robert Loudermilk, and he's going to make some remarks right now. Thanks very much for coming. Well, good evening. I would like to join uh, Dr. Worcester in. Um, congratulating those of you in the first two rows, and welcoming also the family and friends who are here to support these students. Um, Dr. Worcester is exactly right, and for those of us in the room tonight who are engaged in teaching, you do make our job uh, and our passion a lot easier every day. And it's great fun to see students whom you have taught or are teaching in that first two rows. That's part of the pride that those of us who teach have when we see the success of our students reach the level tonight. When you are being inducted tonight, you are not just joining a campus organization. You're not just saying, hey, I just want to be a part of a club. You really are becoming a part of what is an international honor society for two-year colleges, which means your academic excellence has been recognized and it sets for you the challenge of continuing at that level as you continue in RCC or moving beyond. It says, job well done, and it indicates that you have the promise to grow. And so I hope that what you will find in this experience is not only that inner sense of pleasure, knowing that you are becoming associated with a local chapter of an international body, but that it will also inspire you to stay on the track regardless of which direction you go, to achieve excellence in all that you do. Um, if you're going on to further study, set for yourself a bar that is, that is at least this high. Know that you can move in that direction and be successful because you have met that success at this level. Your family and friends have been influential in helping you to move to that point, and your faculty certainly have been instrumental in helping you to achieve that. So again, congratulations, we're proud of you, and we're honored to have this time with you. Good evening. It has been my pleasure over the last couple of inductions to introduce the keynote speaker. And uh, we put a lot of thought in finding people who can give you some direction, some words of wisdom and motivation to continue what you have been doing. And um, 
recognize you for your accomplishments. Um, this uh, induction, it will be Ms. Celeste Ellis. Um, she is the Dean of Sciences of Mathematics here at RCC, and she has been at RCC since, um, 1990, since December of 1995. Uh, she earned her Bachelor of Science in Math and Computer Science from the University of South Carolina at Aiken and Master of Science in Math from University of South Carolina in Columbia. One of the things that I know about Ms. Um, Alice is that every induction, every student-centered ceremony, every recognition day, she's here because she's here to support students not only in the classroom but outside of the classroom and help you recognize the things that you are achieving. So here's Ms. Alice. It's nice to be with you this evening. When Professor Wooster called me a few weeks ago and asked me to make some remarks tonight, I was, I was not surprised since I have been in attendance at many of the last inductions over the last four or five years. I truly believe in this organization and I believe in recognizing student accomplishment. However, I am much more comfortable presenting a math problem as a math instructor. So I thought, what could I do tonight that would be entertaining to a, a wide crowd like this? I thought, how about finding the maximum height of a projectile? I could do that in about 10 minutes, and I would probably lose and uh, maybe half the audience, and then the other half would be disinterested. Perhaps more frightening than that is that some of the inductees in front of me think that might be kind of cool. But, but seriously, I gave some thought to what I might talk with you about tonight, and I reflected on my time in college. And I thought about some lessons that I learned and things that I wanted to share with you. The first of which is how much I evolved while I was in college. And what I mean by that is how much my thinking and my perceptions and my beliefs changed based on what other people had to say. I came from a very small town like many of you, and I had very specific notions when I went into college classrooms. But I listened to what other people had to say about all kinds of topics. It might be the death penalty. It might be gay marriage. It could be any kind of social issue. And I definitely had a notion going into those classes, but I listened to what other people had to say, and in some cases, I changed my mind. Now, in some cases, I still have the same belief I had when I was 18 years old. But what I would like for you is to encourage you, and not just those of you inducted tonight, but all of us, to be open-minded and to listen to people who have differing opinions from our own. You may change your mind about some of your beliefs, you may, it may challenge your beliefs, and it may not, but keep your mind open to other ways of thinking and different opinions in this life. The second thing I wanted to share with you is a little bit of regret that I have about my college life. And that is, about five years or so after I finished college, I thought, hmm, I'm interested in classical music. I would like to know more about the different periods and the different composers. And I did not take music appreciation. Well, I, I boned up on it and, and learned about a little bit of it myself on my own. But in the time, I realized, hmm, maybe instead of just being thrilled that I was done with my gen ed coursework and I could focus on my true passion, which was mathematics, I should have taken music appreciation or introduction to sociology. So what I'm, I'm asking for you is to give that some thought. When you have a chance to take a general ed elective course, take something different from what you would normally expect. Everyone expects to take psychology, no offense, Emory. And I did take that course, but maybe I would have gotten something out of art appreciation had I taken that course. When I finished my graduate degree, my advisor said, Celeste, this may be the last college course you ever take. I'd already completed the degree requirements, but I needed to take three classes in order to maintain my assistantship. So for the first time, I registered for two classes, knowing that I only intended to stay in one of them. I went to both classes for a week, and then I decided, and I took a computer science class instead of the math class. But you just never know when this is going to be your last college class. So if you have a chance to take something different outside of your major, but still within the degree requirements, go for it. Take ethics. Take something that's not in your comfort zone. You will benefit and reap the rewards later in life. Perhaps not at the moment, but later in life, you will be glad you took that course. The next thing is I thought back on the 
the joy that I had when I was in college. And yes, there are stressful times. You have deadlines, I had deadlines. I continue to have deadlines, and those can be stressful, trying to maintain that A grade. Oh yeah, it is stressful, but the rest of you in this crowd understand that stress. But it's worth it in the long run. You will actually remember fondly, believe it or not, the late nights, the early alarm clocks when you got up to look up through your notes one more time before that big exam that day. You will actually enjoy reflecting on the required activities, perhaps cultural events that right now you really dread attending, but in the long run you will benefit from it having attended them. But also at this time, there are, th there are parts of college that will not move on with you into the workplace. And one of those is the immediate gratification that you get on a regular basis in the classroom. Every time you get an assignment returned to you, when you've worked hard on that assignment and you see that A or that B plus, someone is telling you, you did a great job. Now, you will get some of that in the workplace. You will have evaluations periodically in which your supervisor will say, you're doing a great job, you're a fabulous worker. But not as often as you're getting them right now in the classroom. Every week, I would venture to say, you are receiving some sort of positive feedback from your professor. At the end of every semester, you receive your grades. And they are, it's fantastic to open that email and see the A's and the B's or your web advisor account. There's nothing quite like that. So enjoy those chances when you get those, that feedback, that positive reinforcement from your instructors, from your faculty members. One other thing that's really interesting about college life that doesn't carry with you into the workplace is the sense of accomplishment of concluding a semester and then starting with a fresh, clean slate the next semester. No grades haunting you. You're starting from scratch. We don't get chances like that in life very often to start with a clean slate in personal life or in the workplace. So enjoy that. Trust me, you will miss it when you finish your college career. Ultimately, I want you to be proud of your accomplishments. As a math instructor, I cannot tell you how important it is for my students to succeed. I look at this particular group and I'm so impressed with how well you do in all of your courses. We have honor societies on campus that recognize students who perform well in certain disciplines, but in Phi Theta Kappa, this society recognizes all around accomplishment. You are fantastic students in every course that you take, not just in mathematics, not just in English, not just in business. You make our jobs worthwhile when we enter the classroom. You students like yourselves are the reason that I get out of my office and go to class each day. Students who want to learn, who are excited to learn, even calculus, as frightening as that may seem to some people. You, you are the reason this college exists. So be proud of your academic accomplishments. And I would invite you, as Dr. Wooster did, to become involved in the organization, especially in those service projects. Please do not just join Phi Theta Kappa so that you can list this on your resume. Jump right in, get your feet wet, help each other with these projects. If each of you takes on a small facet of a task, it is much less of a big deal and a demand on your time. Ultimately, I know you want to get good grades. I did too. I understand that completely. But please take the opportunity to participate in this organization. This is an extremely valuable group making a huge impact in the community, especially the angel tree at Christmas time. There's nothing quite like providing a holiday for some, a family that cannot afford it otherwise. And this group has, always, has been devoted to that for the entire time that I've been here. So please join in the activities and enjoy your time at RCC. Be sure to share with others in the community what a great experience you have had at RCC. Continue to excel at RCC. And thank your instructors for having the high standards that they do. For it is students like yourselves who meet those standards that allow us to continue to expect those standards from students. Congratulations to all of the inductees, and thank you for letting me be with you this evening. I am truly impressed by all of your accomplishments. Thank you.
Honored Vice President Laddermilk, advisors and fel fellow Phi Theta Kappa members, I am pleased to present to you these candidates for membership in our honor society. These students have fulfilled all requirements for membership and have been selected because they have chosen scholarship, leadership, and service and fellowship as their hallmarks. I recommend them for acceptance into the Alpha Kappa Pi chapter of Phi Theta Kappa, International Honor Society of Two-Year Colleges. You're about to be inducted into a scholarly fellowship which embraces two-year colleges, not only of your own state, but of the nation and the world. This fellowship is Phi Theta Kappa, and your chapter is Alpha Kappa Pi. After induction, you will find among the members an atmosphere of scholarship to which you must give yourself in the, or in the order that the organization may be meaningful to you. I'll leave you with a William Shakespearean quote which describes the inductees. It states, be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. On the table is a torch, symbolic of knowledge, which is a servant of wisdom, which dwells with prudence and leads in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. The white rose represents purity and beauty of life with its white bud signifying intellectual associations. The emblem of Phi Theta Kappa consists of a golden slab keyed at the top and bottom. It represents the standards and ideals of this organization. As members of Phi Theta Kappa, we are committed to pursuits of knowledge, educational leadership, and commitment to our communities and modeling the virtues of wisdom, aspiration, and purity to others. Now we ask that the new members complete the pledge which admits you into our complete fellowship and when I prompt, please state your name. Repeat after me. I, your name, do solemnly promise on the 23rd day of April to uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa and to keep the object and aim in mind. And I do solemnly pledge allegiance to my fellow members and promise to aid them in all worthy endeavors. Please stand. Okay. Jessica Barron from Stokesdale, majoring in the Associate of Arts program. After graduation, she plans to transfer to UNCG. She would like to thank her parents and teachers, both in the early college, high school, and RCC staff. Charles Buss from Eden, majoring in HVAC. Uh, his plans after graduation are that in today's changing world, with more and more older people being forced to go back to work uh, or to college in order to gain employment, his hopes are to uh, make a more positive motivator for the returning students and to show them to believe in themselves. Uh, his other goal is to give back uh, to Keith Sigmund uh, some of the help he has provided to him in the last two years here at RCC. Um, he would like to acknowledge, um, thank you, Dan, um, Deanna Campbell, whose unwavering dedication over the last two years to not only uh, his home, but friends and family, which have allowed him the opportunity to pursue a lifelong goal of obtaining a degree. Linda Jane Chambers from Stokesdale, Stokesdale, majoring in computer technology. After graduation, she plans to begin a career in computer information technology to gain experience and eventually return to college to obtain her forensic degree and work for the government. She would like to dedicate this honor to Dr. Foster Williamson, Ms. Diana Dalton, uh, Rick Leinecker, 
uh, Bruce Needleham, and her parents, Kay and Roy Chambers. Uh, her partner in life, her husband, Daniel, and her many friends and family. She would like to thank God above all for giving her the opportunity and chance to live a f and fulfill her ambitions throughout her life. Wendy Dunavant from Stokesdale, majoring in the Associate of Nursing program. After graduation, she plans to work on the life flight uh, transport, helping trauma patients en route to the hospital trauma units. She would like to thank her husband and children for their love and moral support in helping her accomplish her lifelong dream of becoming a registered nurse. Debbie Irwin from Greensboro, majoring in the uh, RN program. After graduation, she plans to look into ECU and UNCG uh, for her bachelor's degree in nursing. She would like to dedicate this honor to her husband, Dustin. Thomas Knight, Jr. from Eden, majoring in the Associate of Arts program. After graduation, he plans to transfer to East Carolina University to earn his Bachelor of Science degree uh, in business administration with a concentration in management information systems. He would like to dedicate this honor to his mother, aunt, grandmother, and uncle. David William Martin from Eden, majoring in criminal justice. After graduation, he plans to continue the pursuit of education in criminal justice and continue working in the law enforcement field. He would like to give thanks to God for without him nothing would be possible. He would also like to thank his wife Misty for her support, encouragement, and patience, and his family for their support. Desby McDaniel from Eden, majoring in criminal justice. After graduation, he plans to transfer to a four-year college to obtain his bachelor's degree and become a counselor. He would like to dedicate this honor to his mother, his children, Des and Jasmine, and the rest of his family and friends who have always supported him and continue to inspire him to be a better person. Chelsea McCollum from Reedsville, majoring in respiratory therapy. After graduation, she plans to pursue her career in a hospital setting and hopefully go back to school to receive her bachelor's degree. She would like to dedicate this honor to her grandmother who inspired her to go into her chosen program to help others. She would like to thank her parents who taught her to believe in herself and her dance teacher who inspired her to never give up. Kevin McCone from Mayadan, majoring in chemistry. After graduation, he plans to discover something. He would like to dedicate this honor to God, his mom and dad, Dr. Efremov, the chemist that inspired him to become a chemist, uh, Ms. Totten, formerly Ms. Allen, who inspired him to become an organic chemist, and Mr. Baum, who taught him the things he thought he knew. Matthew Oberg from Reedsville, majoring in forensic accounting. After graduation, he plans on furthering his education at Guilford College and pursue his master's degree. He would like to thank his mom and dad for believing that he could achieve his goals. Brooke Perguson from Reedsville, majoring in the Associate of Arts program and elementary education. After graduation, she plans to attend Elon University in the fall to obtain her bachelor's degree in elementary education. She hopes to work at Bethany Elementary and eventually return to Elon to obtain her master's degree in education. She would like to dedicate this honor to her parents, grandparents, and brother who have inspired and supported her in everything she has done. Shonda Pulliam from Reedsville, um, associate's degree in nursing major. She, upon graduation, plans to seek employment in her chosen career field and go back to school for her bachelor's degree. She would like to dedicate this honor and thanks to her family and friends, especially Wendy, her school supporter.
Corey Roberts from Stoneville, majoring in machining technology and industrial systems technology. After graduation, he plans to pursue a job in his career field, and he would like to dedicate this honor to Chris Brooks. Timothy Robertson from Eden, majoring in the Associate of Arts program. After graduation, he plans to transfer to NC State in the fall to major in political science. He would like to thank his parents, David and Judy, for all of their support. <laughs> Heather Stroud from Eden, majoring in criminal justice. After graduation, she plans to attend law school. She would like to dedicate this honor to her husband, Jeff, for his awesome support while she has been in school, and her daughter, Addison. She would like to thank her wonderful professors, Ann Wade and Ken Hux, who are so wonderful at what they do. It is my pleasure to welcome you into the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society and the lively fellowship of scholars it affords. I salute you for your accomplishment. I charge you to explore always for truth and to dedicate yourselves to the cultivation of the well-reasoned life, a prelude to service and honor. Uh, how about one more round of applause for the inductees tonight? Okay, and as we transition to the food, I have to acknowledge one person who is out, outside behind the scene. She's been working tirelessly for about eight hours today, putting together a, a nice buffet and um, baking about 97 world-class cupcakes. Her name is Kelly Donovan. She's a past officer in PTK. We should thank her, too. Enjoy your evening, folks. Enjoy the food. You've, you've earned it. Good night. <laughs>